everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making a herbal breast oil and I'm taking you along for the journey. My name's Corrine, and here at Spirea, I share videos that weave together plant wisdom, holistic health, self-sufficiency with just a dash of magic. If this sounds interesting to you, I'd love for you to stick around. So it's been a while since I have filmed a video. Uh, I will admit that I've been navigating some herbal homestead overwhelm with all of the crops coming to fruition kind of at the same time and I needed to take a step back in order not to completely burn out. So how have you guys been? Let me know in the comments. I know it's probably been at least a couple weeks since we've connected here on YouTube. and. Nothing's really changed in terms of how much food and flowers and medicine is available, but I feel a little better and a little calmer. So today I'm going to be making a herbal breast oil. Now I do have a recipe in my book. So if you have my book or want my book, there is a recipe for breast oil in here. Oftentimes when I'm making these recipes, I use the plants that are in abundance on my property that tend to just pop up on my property out of nowhere and sort of fit the bill for the herbal therapeutic properties I'm looking for. So when we want to make a breast oil, one of the main properties we're looking for is lymphatics. These are herbs that help to support the lymphatic system. And of course, with our underarms being so close to our breast tissue, that whole area is just rich in lymphatic tissue. Breast massage is, an, in my opinion, an integral part in terms of keeping our lymphatic system healthy, keeping our breast tissue healthy, and it also allows us to connect with our bodies to ensure that there's nothing going on that we need to be aware of. And so I really love and I really encourage um, massaging, uh, breast massage, but if you can combine it with a supportive herbal oil that helps to promote lymphatic draining, movement helps with things like lymphatic congestion, it really is a nice pairing. And another way to help support the lymphatic system is through dry brushing. I do have a video on this, so I'm gonna link that up here so you guys can check that out. These methods can of course be done at the same time, no problem at all. So I'm gonna get my husband to zoom in here in just a minute and show you some of the plants that I'm gonna be playing with today. So what's really nice and versatile about making uh, oils that will help support lymphatic health. And I should mention too, while I'm calling this a breast oil, this is supportive to lymphatic health. So this would be excellent for things like varicose veins, spider veins, and all that kind of stuff too. So keep that in mind. You could really use this as a whole body massage oil. Um, you really have a lot of choices when it comes to plants. So as an example, this beautiful jar of calendula infused oil that I already have. I mean, look at this color. It is just stunning. Calendula is an excellent lymphatic herb, so you can definitely use this. I will be adding in some nettle oil, and you can see the color differences on this. The nettle always turns this really dark, dark brown kind of color, and I made this earlier in the season, so I will be adding it to what I have here available today, and I even have a little bit of plantain oil, which would be a really nice addition as well. So I encourage you to look into the herbal lymphatics that grow in your area what's in abundance on your property and work with what you have. Now you don't have to use fresh plant material. I prefer to do so. And I'm gonna post a link to my herbal infused oil blog post um, that'll guide you through using dried herbs, fresh herbs, and the pros and cons of each. Last night, what I did is uh, we're in for tons of rain over the next few days. So I ran out quickly and I harvested all the herbs I knew I'd wanna be playing with today. And I just let them kind of wilt overnight. That's a great option if you wanna use fresh plant material because that helps to pull some of the moisture out. So as you can see here, one of the plants I have is goldenrod. And I'm gonna post another link to my video on goldenrod because this is a magical plant and I would not be without it in terms of a lymphatic support oil. So that's the one plant I'm gonna be playing with. Um, another one, I just cut the flowering tops, is purple loosestrife. And this just popped up on my property out of nowhere. 
and it's growing in my mint beds of all places, which I thought was really kind of fascinating. And I've told you before that um, if plants start to just show up on your property out of nowhere, pay attention to that. That's, in my opinion, that's one of the ways that plants communicate with us in terms of what you might be needing in your family or in your community at large. So I, of course, wanted to play with the purple loose stripe. I'm going to be adding in some blue vervain, which I also have a video about if you don't know about verbena hostata. This is an amazing plant too. And this is a secondary lymphatic, but I have it in such abundance on the property, I wanted to add just a little. And I found just a few teeny tiny red clovers. Um, red clover is another great addition to a breast oil. It's very supportive to women's health. So if you're working with fresh plant material, one of the first things you're going to want to do is strip away this woody stalk. Um, it's really, in general, the stalks on plants are fairly inert. They're mostly fiber. The sole purpose, not the sole purpose, but one of the main purposes is to hold the plant up so it can reach the sun. It's also a transportation uh, medium by which nutrients and water and things get moved through the plant. But in terms of making medicine, they're fairly inert. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna strip off all of these leaves and flowers, discarding my main stock, and then I'll show you what I'll do next. If you're ready to take your herbal knowledge and learning to a deeper level, to understand the nitty gritty aspects of natural living and natural health, to bring vitality back into your life, and to learn how to weave these beautiful rhythms and cycles we have on this planet into your own practices and way of being, not to mention join a supportive, interactive, and really great community, I invite you to check out my monthly membership platform, Weavers of Plant Wisdom. If this sounds interesting to you, you can check out the link in the description box below to learn more. All right, so I have all of the flowers stripped off the main stalk. This was what I was trying to avoid, okay? You see how it's just mostly fiber. I don't want to put this in my oils or if you're making tinctures or teas. So that's why you go through the effort of stripping off all of those flowers. I mean, look at that gorgeous color for goldenrod. I love working with goldenrod. Now, before I start chopping these plants, I want to talk to you a bit about some carrier oils that you can choose from. There are some that I really love to include in a breast oil. One would be castor oil. It just absorbs really, really nicely, but I only, I wouldn't use 100% castor oil because it's really thick. So I'll cut it with a bit of jojoba oil, which I also really like for a breast oil. And then I will top off the rest with an apricot kernel oil. Other great options would be hemp seed oil that is excellent for breast health. Um, but I also encourage you to work with what you have and what's within your means. Some of these oils, like for example, jojoba oil is very expensive. And so work with what you have or maybe just use small amounts of the more expensive oil and then top off with the rest. Now I will be combining this with a little bit of calendula and nettle and plantain that I made earlier in the season. That's the trickier part with making herbal infused oils from fresh plant material because not everything blooms at the same time. So you may have to kind of plan your apothecary creations accordingly and make your oils throughout the season knowing that you might use them for multiple different methods. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to use a knife of choice. I love my mezzaluna. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that this is a worthwhile investment. I'm just going to roughly chop my plant material using my blade. Just like that. Now, some herbalists don't chop, and that's fine. You know, I've, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You ask 100 herbalists how to do something, you're going to get 101 different answers. I was always trained and still believe that when you chop plant material, you're increasing surface area. And by increasing surface area, you have more surface area to pull chemical constituents out. Um, you'll have some herbalists that don't chop, say it's disrespectful to the plant. I say you do you and then work with what feels good and what you get in terms of results, right? Like where do you get your best results? From chopping, not chopping? I also encourage you to experiment with both. So like I said, I'm just gonna roughly chop these. I'm hoping I have enough. I want to have my jar about three quarters of the way full up to all the way full if I'm using fresh plant material, which I might not. So I may have to run out and get a little bit more plants. Actually, that's not too bad. 
Um, for dry plant material, you're going to use about half because you don't have to, you, you're not compensating for the water that's in fresh plant material. So I probably could have used a smaller jar and you know what, I may actually switch to a smaller jar in just a second. All right, so this is a much better ratio. It is a smaller jar. Um, and in terms of glass, like use what you have. This is actually an old honey jar that I can't get the label off of. It works just fine for herbal infused oils. And so from here, you're gonna add your carrier oils of choice. I'm not fabulous with measurements. I tend to be a little bit more folksy when I do these types of recipes, but I'm probably going to do about, I'd say a quarter of the jar filled with my castor oil. And see, it's really thick. So I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't use 100% castor oil because I find that a bit too thick. I'm add just a touch of jojoba. Like that. And then I'm gonna top off the rest with an organic apricot kernel oil. But like I said, use what you have access to. And there you have it. So now the trick with herbal infused oils, of course, is to keep an eye on them. Fresh plant material does have potentiality for growing mold. So I always kind of pop the lid every few days just to check to make sure everything's going okay. But since I started wilting my plants ahead of time, even just for 12 or 24 hours, it has made a difference. If you're using fresh plant material, you're gonna want your oil to sit for about three to four weeks. And then you're going to strain out your herbs and from there you can bottle it and use it just like this. You can add essential oils if you choose. I do encourage you to do a bit of research and to remember that breast tissue is very sensitive. And so if you do choose to add essential oils, make sure you're adding very gentle ones in incredibly small dilutions. I wouldn't go any higher than 1% dilution personally. For dried herbs, I like to let them sit a little longer, closer to four to five weeks. And then the process is the same. You're gonna strain out your herb material, bottle it, um, and then add in essential oils if you so choose. All right, so never forget, label your products. And so that way you know what you have brewing and going, because if you get into this, you're gonna have jars upon jars upon jars. And then if you're canning and fermenting, you'll have even more jars. So it's really good to know what's in everything. So I labeled this with the herbs that were in it, the date that I made it, and the carrier oils that I used. And of course I labeled it breast oils, so I knew that that was what this was going to be an end product for. Uh, if you're worried about using fresh herbs, I encourage you to check out that blog post. I'm gonna link in the description. I have an entire post on making herbal infused oils from both dried and fresh herbs and how to navigate. One way to navigate would be to gently warm this. So if you're really nervous about that water content, you could put this in a crock pot with water have the lid off and set it to warm overnight and that will help to warm gently warm the oil so they won't go rancid allowing some of that water content to evaporate off i know people who've used seed warming mats you can put them on those as well another way to ensure that that water content is dealt with alternatively you can just use dried herbs and you don't have to worry now if you have any questions at all about making a breast oil working with lymphatic herbs or breast massage in general i encourage you to leave those below and until next time, this is Corinne from Spireia Herbs, wishing you health and wellness.